welcome to Theater Threshold. Thank you for tuning in to this week's production. In preparation for the show, please mute your mic, turn off your video, and hide non-video participants. Please keep the chat respectful. Those that do not follow these instructions will be held accountable. Note that this production is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube. So if you do not want to be in that final video, you are advised to keep cameras off. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hi, welcome. Certainly glad you can join us today. We have a lovely painting and let's get started. Let's start by having them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. And while they're doing that, I'll show you what we have right here. Right here, we have our standard 18 by 24 inch canvas, but you use whatever canvas works best for you. We just like that, it fixes the screen pretty well. And on top of that, we have a very thin coat of the liquid white. So let's get started. I'm gonna take the two inch brush and we're just gonna go a little bit into that phthalo blue and just a little bit of the sap green. The sap green, phthalo blue, just mix it right on the brush. I thought today it'd be fun to maybe do some sort of, um, maybe we're deep in the woods and it's like a nice dark forest. So with that, we're just gonna take the brush, load it with some color. Don't need a lot of color here though. Very little color. You can always add color, but the sun again, take it away. And so up here, let's just, let's just dance it all on the canvas. And we'll have some parts will be a little bit lighter and maybe some other parts are really dark. Whatever you want to do. Maybe some parts you have very little pressure. And other parts you have a lot of pressure. And it's completely up to you. Hopefully by the end of this, it'll look like distant trees in the background. And as we're doing this, the paint is actively mixing with the liquid white on there. Without that liquid white, we'd be using a lot of paint. We'd be in agony state right now. All right, just like that. Let's cover about half the canvas. All right, let's wash the old brush. It's always my favorite part. Wash the brush in odorless thinner. Now the excess and put it Just beat the double with it. All right, now with our clean dry brush, we're just gonna do some little crisscross so let's blend these in. You can blend this in until it's all one solid color, but Let's try to do that. I want some parts to be quite dark and some parts to be quite light. Go. Just play around with it however way you want to do the sky, it's up to you. All right, let's go back and forth just to get rid of the brush strokes. There. Well, let's use the same brush, rock because why not? And we'll just use the phthalo blue, sap green, let's add a little bit of black just to darken that up. Maybe down here is some is a little stream. So just go along like that, starting at the bottom and working your way up. This way it'll look like it's going backwards. It, it'll get us the illusion of distance. So start at the bottom and just work your way up, not even going more paint. Just worry about basic shapes right here. Don't worry about the white, that will eventually be covered up. And any part that we don't want water later, we'll just paint over. As easy as that. All right, that was easy. Just wash off the old brush again. I think I just like making excuses to wash off your brush. <laughs> That's the most fun part. All right, how about, how about we take our liner brush and we'll go right into the paint thinner and just thin out a little bit the Van Dyke brown. This is just straight Van Dyke brown. I want to thin it down a lot. This is very thin paint. It's almost like the consistency of ink. As you can see, the paint is already starting to run down the 
sort of run down the palette. So just twist the brush and pull to a straight edge. Maybe back in here, there's some, there's some trees. It's way in the distance. The reason we thin this down is because a thin paint is expired to the thick paint. If you're starting to pick up too much of the background paint, that means you need more thinner. Maybe there's just a big, big flock of trees in the back. Are they called a flock? I don't know. I think they are now. It doesn't really matter. Just begin putting in a bunch of happy little trees. Not worrying about distance, they're too far away. So we wouldn't notice any detail. You do as a home, you can use as, use just as little or as many trees as you like. It's up to you. These trees would be a really great place where my squirrels to live. I like to call them tree urchins because they just crawl up along trees. Make sure I give you some character. Don't make them all the same. Trees are like people, they're, they're all different. Some are tall, some are short, some are skinny, some are fat. They're all different, but yet they're all beautiful. And for these, some people like to start at the bottom and work their way up. Some people like to start at the top and work their way down. Whatever works for you is the right way. Everyone has different ways of doing things. Doesn't make one way wrong, it just means it's easier for some people to do work other things. Maybe, maybe. Something you could do is you take your brush, go right into the liquid clear, and thin the brown out that way. Now what the liquid clear does, it's an oil-based paint that's very clear. And what it does is it'll just thin out the paint and when it dries, it has a nice little like sheen to it, a little bit of glaze. So maybe there's some trees that just go right in front of here. And once those dry, it'll start, it'll almost look like they're sparkling. It'll be very pretty. You're really gonna stand out in your painting. Okay, that's fun. At home, when you're doing this, you can add as little or as many as you want. How about now we take, take our knife, go a little bit into the, little bit of the blue and green, a little bit of the titanium white. Let's put a little black in there, just so it want to be sort of dark. A little more blue. White. All right. How about let's use an old brush, like the old brush. You can tell it apart from the other ones because it has a rounded head and has a black handle. We'll just paint both sides of that. We have a nice little edge. And this is great for doing a multi different leaves. So you just kind of Tap it along here. And it also looks like there's thousands of different leaves right there. This is great for making some nice little hangy down limbs. And if you want to be straight, just go straight forward with it. Or if you want to be a little rounder, you can go straight like this. So whatever way you want. You can switch it up, you can do one way, do both ways. I don't know. It's really up to you. Here's some bushes down here. So 
one little dark thing around here. Maybe in the back, there's some, some trees just poking through. We're not really thinking too much about this. We're just kind of letting it happen. Try not to think too hard. Just like, just imagine in your head and go for it. All right. How about let's take our knife to go straight into the Van Dyke Brown. Maybe down here, there's just a little, there's a little patch of land. This is straight Van Dyke Brown. Some dark sienna, a little bit of titanium white. Susan highlights, not a lot though. This is still very far into the distance, very dark. You wouldn't see very much detail. So there's here and there. All right. Now let's take a let's take a fan brush. Dip it a little bit to liquid liquid white into the cad yellow. The liquid white is just there to thin it down. Remember our golden rule, thin paint is compared to a thick paint. Let's take some cad yellow, sap green, maybe a little bit of black, just to darken a bit. Black and yellow and green make a lovely green. Need some Maybe some yellow ochre there too. Just give it a variety of colors. Put it onto a fan brush, lock color, and around here we'll just start pushing upward. There's some green things living in the distance right there. Maybe we can take that old brush again and show them that color. And just do a little hot. Where do you think the sun would just really sink through? And again, if you're still picking up some of the background paint, you can easily get a little bit of the paint thinner and just thin it down. All right. Maybe, maybe down here, there's just sick fan brush, get some liquid white. It's just liquid white and titanium white. Mix that right into the brush. Again, liquid white is just there to thin it down. Maybe down here, there's just some water splashing around. Make all sorts of a mess there. Going along, it's a lovely day, and then just falls right over. It's a rock right there. So it's, it's that easy. Moving around. And boop. Another rock. It's fun just to make stories uh, whenever you're painting. It makes it a little more fun, it's really helpful. Your family might look at you a little weird, but that's okay. Painters are expected to be a little, a little different. Okay, how about let's take let's take our one inch brush. And how about we just mix up a little bit of the sap green, some Van Dyke Brown, a little black. It wants to be quite a dark color. Hold that in one direction, a lot of paint. And around here, there's some, just some bushes. There's very dark bushes there just out, out in the back. Some over here, so it's some little friendly little bushes. My world is quite dark, so you don't really see a ton of detail, but maybe in your world or you can put all 
different kinds of greens and bright colors in there. And we'll turn it sign out. Now, if someone were to live here, they would, they would need a way to get across there. So let's build a bridge. Let's take a knife. We'll just, we'll just draw a bridge right there. Let's move it across. It's a very simple old bridge. Like that. Now, I don't want to fall on over, so let's give him some supports. You know, we'll take a small knife. I like a small knife, this helps really get into the small details. And we'll just start laying in support beams right there. There, there. Now on top of that, I have another rail. There. I need to do it. Some brown, some white. Mix up some highlight. Here and there, there's just put in here and there. Don't you don't need too much. It's very far in the back, not a lot of detail. And maybe, maybe, maybe here and there, the light is really just seeing through. You see it's all a gleam on it. And you just take straight, titanium white, kind of right there. And there, yeah, so it's a little bridge. If only are that easy in real life. <laughs> now let's go back to this brush, the bush color. Oh, let's kind of push that right back. We don't really know where it lives, nor do I think we really care. Just push it into the back. We need a bigger brush for this one. Let's start laying in some land right around here. So let's take our two inch brush and we're gonna get some straight, straight Van Dyke Brown. Just load it up. We'll start adding a very general shape right here. We're not too worried about um, any details right here. Just make some very basic shapes. Maybe someone comes out right up here. Where do you think there'd be some land? It comes out right here. It's up to you. I'm just showing you a technique, but this is your world. And there's a little more on this side. You really just want to start enclosing all the light colors by putting darker colors on the back. This way at the end, your eyes are going to be drawn more towards the water. Right, 
let's take that same brush and a little bit of the sap green and some dark sienna to that. Pull it in one direction. And up here, there's just, let's put a happy little tree. You know me, I always have to have some sort of happy little tree in the back. I just want to go right off the canvas. And let's put another one on the other side. Just comes all the way around here. Again, not worrying too much about detail. Make some very general decision. All right. Let's take another one inch brush right into the liquid white, cad yellow. So the sap green, so the black. It wants to be quite a dark green still. And again, we're pulling in one direction. I'm going to show me lightly tapping around here. Send in some little highlights in there. Don't overdo it though. Sometimes it gets a feeling good, and then you just have a big block right there. We still want some dark in there. I'm just do layer after layer. Make sure you're getting darker as you go down. In some bushes, you can still leave quite dark, but they're still waiting back. There's a bunch of little grass thing down here. I don't know, it's up to you. Let's take a knife, like sienna, titanium white. Maybe it's just some rocks and stone that just go around here. We're just scraping in that color with the knife. Maybe, got an idea. Take some Van Dyke Brown. Maybe there's just a little bank right here, a little drop off. And say we're not gonna just scrape it right in. It's just right along here. Okay. Let's take, let's take our fan brush. And let's just start tapping into this color. It's our green color. Just tap in a bunch of different colors. Maybe along the river, there's just some, or just some little grassy things that live on it, a little bit of moss. Sometimes they just live right along there. Maybe it just comes right along here. Let's watch this fan brush. Let's watch this one's brush. Let's go into some liquid white, some of that 
grass color again. I want this to be a little bit lighter though. We're gonna pick up a little more of the yellow. Maybe there's just some really bright leafy things around here. And just a little along there. I'll have to be minding my own business. Just really get a multitude of colors on it. I don't want it to be all one bland color. As you can see, there's a lot of different colors in there. On here, and down here. I don't know. It's all to you. Maybe with the knife. Bottom here, there's just a little bit of these, these moss things I'm going to stand on. And just sit right there. Don't worry about getting in the water. You can fix that later. It's very easy to fix. Remember, we don't make mistakes here. We should make happy accidents. Don't be too worried about those things. If you're too stressed out of painting, you probably aren't doing it right. Painting is supposed to be a happy thing. There. Now let's go back to that brush that we have with the liquid white and titanium white. And let's start adding more onto the river. And around here, they're just splashing along the edge. And another drop off. There's this. It's a very free river. There's just so much going on. Right. All right, how about now? Let's take, let's take another fan brush. Let's do fan brush, go into some liquid clear. Van Knight Brown. Just to thin it. And here's a bravery test. Maybe there's some tree that just went way out here, right in the foreground. There is now, anyways. Just let it happen. There's a few of them. Two of my friend. Yeah, I, mean, I think everyone needs a friend. And there's a third one right here. That's up to you. Do as little or as many trees as you like. Take a liner brush, go into that same paint. Let's give these trees some character. Really just wiggle the brush on there. So then I have to, to wiggle my hand my own. I have to really give it a little shake just to give these things in character. I've had people write a letter say, Bob, I can't, I can't paint. It's, my hands are too shaky, but in this case, you're a pro. And again, because that liquid clear is there, these are really going to shine through at the end. All right, let's get that old brush again. Let's go into color. Maybe we'll make this one a little bit more yellow. All right, quite light. Maybe the sun's just kind of zooming through here a little more. We can see all the different colors. Maybe there's a, there's a leaf that comes out here. Now, something funny you can do is you can just take a little bit of the liquid clear, thin down that color again. Same color, just a little bit thinner. Just put some little sparklers in there. Where do you think the leaves would just kind of sparkle a little bit? It's up to you. And looks like we have ourselves a finished painting. Really hope you try this one. This is a great example of just how easy this technique can be. And so, I'm always here. 
I'd like to wish you a happy painting. God bless my friend. Yay, that's so good. Good job. Okay, so now we are gonna get into the Q&A section. Cam Ross, I hope you're ready. We have some really fun questions. I was laughing. I like fun questions. Yes, okay. So the first one is from Nick, Laura. He said, where does Bob Ross get all his amazing painting supplies? Details preferred, please. I buy a lot of it on, um, on Amazon. Uh, it's pretty, it's just the most convenient way. I think you can also get it on Blick Art Supplies. Um, I'm sure Michael has some of them. But yeah, I buy all the, all the paintbrushes off Amazon, uh, canvases, Amazon. I used to buy stuff at the art store back when we were in person. That was just very convenient. Uh, I think Michael's has a lot of the same supplies though. Like um, I had to buy some of the paint from Michael's. Painting I got also got from Michaels. Uh, some of the stuff I made myself, like the easel and everything, but all the supplies you can easily get at Michaels or Amazon, Blick Art Supplies. Yeah. Uh, Art Supply Warehouse also probably has stuff. I've heard they're really good. Um, Kiara just put in the chat, and I think we should do this before we move on. Can we get a close up of the finished painting? Oh, yeah, sure. Very nice. That's so sick. Very nice. Okay. Oh, this next one is from Kiara as well. It's a two-parter question. The first one is, what's Cam Ross's favorite color to paint with? Hmm. It's a tough one. Um, different blues are nice, like phthalo blue and Prussian blue are really fun to play with. Uh, they mix well with like a bunch of different colors. Uh, titanium white's great just because it, like it, you can use it for pretty much anything just to make it a little lighter. And then what's your favorite color in general? Favorite color probably either red or blue, one of those. If you had to pick. Probably red. Red. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Eileen said, <laughs> I like this question. What color does Cam Ross identify with the most? <laughs> color do I identify with? Okay. Um, it's a very important question. I like the Van Dyke Brown, I think. Uh, I feel like that's just, it's very down to earth. Aww. It's very earthy. Uh, you can use it all by itself. And so it works very well. It mixes well with a lot of different colors. It's used for a lot of earth tones and yeah. I like it. Our next question, Melissa, she put oil paints question mark. I believe she's asking, were you painting with oil paints? Yes, these are all oil paints. Awesome. Mika said, I thought this question was cute as well. What is Cam Ross's favorite season to paint? Cause you do a lot of outdoor scenery. Um, really like winter. Uh, you can really do a lot with winter. Like you could, it could look very cold, but you can also do very warm uh, colored winter paintings. And I, I've always just liked winter in general. My birthday's in winter, all that. It's just a nice, I like those a lot. We have another question from Nick. He said, what is it behind the artistry and the crafting of the trees that make them so happy? He loves them. He's just curious. It makes them so trees happy. are just always very happy. They're very free. They're just chilling. They don't have to worry about anything. They're just kind of there. You know, they don't, they don't have no quarrel with the outside world. They just kind of sit there. They give us oxygen. I mean, I'd be happy too if I was helping the world like that. Mika said, what is Cam Ross's favorite tree species? Did I say that right? Yeah, species. Uh, I enjoy evergreens. You know, they're, very, you know, they're a typical kind of 
ones you'd see in the forest, how they kind of like, they do like in that triangle shape, almost like a Christmas tree type thing. Yeah, it's good. Diana asked, how does Cam Ross feel about deforestation? Hmm, it is definitely a big problem that there is way too much for deforestation out there. Um, I feel that if we are going to, you know, get wood, because we do need wood, obviously, but we definitely need to try and grow as much trees as we are taking out trees. Very good answer. Marissa said, Cam Ross, do you have a favorite rock? Hmm. Oh, rock to paint, but technology is hard. She just put in the chat. Do you have a favorite rock to paint? <laughs> Or favorite rock in general? I don't know much about geology, sadly. Uh, I don't paint too many rocks. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for that. I don't know much about rocks. Okay, I'm sure Marissa. <laughs> smooth rock, that's amazing. It's easy to paint on if it's smooth. Um, <laughs> Nick said, how did Cam Ross get to be so talented with his paint, brush, and canvas? Practice, practice, practice. I've done so many different paintings. And I've done so many practice. It started when I took a painting class at Kelsey Lamy for scenic painting. And then I just kept watching Bob Ross and like kind of really listening and intently watching it. And I just kept practicing, practicing, practicing. And I eventually I got better. It was a little bit harder at first to get used to the oil paints. I'm used to acrylic painting. Right. Uh, oil is a different kind of animal, but I got used to it and with enough practice, I could easily uh, make these. So yeah, just like any skill, it just takes a ton of practice. Okay. Yes, Gustavo said, what's Cam Ross's inspiration when it comes to his paintings? A lot of my paintings I get from actual episodes of Bob Ross. Okay. I like watch an episode like a few times, write down the notes. Um, but I, but I do sometimes do my own original paintings. Uh, I get a lot from like pictures of nature. Sometimes I'll just see a picture and some people are like, that's a beautiful picture. I'm like, I, I need to paint that picture. It just, I can already like start working in my mind, like what I can, how I do like different parts of it and stuff. That's so fun. I want to see a sunset next. That's just, okay. anyway. I want to do one of those. I love sunsets. Okay. Mean asked, what did Cam Ross Oh, sorry. What did Cam Ross eat before painting? This is for research purposes. Um, this morning I had a breakfast burrito. That was about it. What kind of breakfast burrito? It was like a microwave breakfast burrito that had like eggs and bacon and stuff in it. It doesn't really matter. I don't really think about what I eat beforehand. <laughs> but it's definitely easier to paint on a full stomach as long as it's like filling. Cause like sometimes like when I'm hungry, I'll like, I'll shake. So it's, it's good to have a good meal for pain. I hope that satisfied your question, Mean. Breakfast burrito. Um, there was some questions in the chat that I missed. Gabe said, if Cam Ross were to name a color, what would he title it to describe it? I think if you could just pick a name, title uh name for color uh maybe like a for like a, a yellowish a dark yellowish brown called deep sienna or something something yeah. deep so well yes you i would i feel you have to name it cam ross oh the camera cam ross the color i don't know what that would oh, be red, <laughs> <laughs> red. Just the most basic red. Okay, Juliana said, does Cam Ross only paint with oil paints? I think you answered this earlier. I like doing, um, for this show in particular, it's nice to do oils just because you can like layer on top of it without having each layer dry. But I do like doing mixed media where like I'll do an acrylic background, let that dry, and then in the forefront I can use oils. So I like to do a little bit of both. Very nice. Um, so we have Three more questions. Um, the next one is from Diana, and I think we're all dying to know this. How does one get on Cam Ross's level? How do you do that? 
does again, like I said earlier, it's a lot of, a lot of practice, watch a lot of the episodes. Bob Ross is a great teacher. So I learned from the master just to watch a lot of his episodes, pay close attention, maybe even take notes, um, like you would a lecture, uh, and then just keep practicing, practice, practice, practice. Uh, the first time I ever painted on a canvas, it didn't turn out that great. Uh, but then you just keep practicing and you get better and better with each painting. Practice, practice. Um, Kiara said, also, hey, Cam Ross, is there anywhere we can buy some of your amazing paintings and works? Yes, if you go to my Etsy at Cam's Wood Workshop, uh, you can buy plenty of different paintings. Uh, I still have all the paintings from my last show. Uh, and then today I'm going to upload these paintings. So yeah, uh, Cam's Wood Workshop on Etsy. You can also find me on Instagram at that name. And they're all there from past shows and just some random ones that I did by myself. Do it. Go check it out. Support small businesses. Um, oh, okay. Really fast. Alexandria, before we reach our last question, Alexandria asked, hi, do you have a favorite Bob Ross episode? I don't know about that. Um, there's this one that he did. I like he, uh, he took a piece of tape and he made like two little squares around it. And then like he painted over the tape and at the end he tore off the tape. So it like, there are just a white box around the painting and it give it like, it made it look very 3D. And then there's another one I really like where he, he put some tape on there to make it look like a window. And so he took the tape off and it looked like you're looking at a window. So I, I like the ones where he like, he, like he used like tape and stuff. Yeah, that's sick. Okay, so we actually have two more questions, but the other one I'm gonna ask after. We had a viewer put a very, very detailed and very nicely thought out question. And I just don't think I can do it justice by just reading it. So I would like to know if that viewer could turn his camera and mic on and ask Cam Ross himself. Is that okay with you, Cam Ross? Yeah, sure. Okay, viewer, could you do it? Hello. Hi. I'll let you wait. Hello. Uh, I just, first of all, I gotta say, big fan of your work. This is a beautiful piece in the background. It's just wonderful. I can't, I'm speechless. Uh, but my question, I'm just gonna read it straight from the chat if you don't mind. Um, whew, I'm nervous. Um, so with consideration to the piece, I'm curious as to how you employ the complex nature of shadows, such as highlights, core of shadows, reflected light, cast light, etc., etc., as well as being able to capture the majesty of this nature without having a still life in front of you to base off, you know, the painting that you ended up creating. Because I'm noticing you employing a lot of these techniques without seemingly trying to do so. So I would just like to know how do you make such a beautiful work of art without even seemingly trying to integrate even any of these uh, artistic techniques that you've so beautifully already put in? I don't think I understand the question. What do you mean? I'm just curious as to how you made such a beautiful work of art. Yeah, I just, um, it's good just trying to think of, um, again, I just follow along with Bob Ross, kind of took the notes. Uh, and while you're painting, it's good to try and think of just where the light comes from. Um, and then you just kind of, you just kind of, you just kind of like think about the colors, think about where the light's coming from. And then you just kind of go with it. It's just kind of natural that way. Eventually it just becomes like a secondhand thing. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nick. I appreciate it, you taking your time to ask this question. Thank you. All right, and finally, oh, I'm going to unspotlight you now, sorry. Um, Eileen, our beautiful, amazing managing director asked, any final thoughts from the legend before this saga concludes? I would just like to thank all of you for coming to my show and supporting it. Uh, I first uh, pitched this show back about a year ago 
And I kind of just did it as a joke. I honestly didn't think it'd be picked. Uh, I was like, this sounds like a fun idea. I doubt it's going to be picked. It's just so different than all the other shows. But it got picked and everyone supported it. And that really helped me drive uh, right through it. I'm not an actor, so I, this was very nerve wracking to me. Uh, I get very nervous performing, but because I had so much support from everyone, it made it a lot easier to do. So I just like to thank everyone for supporting me and getting really excited for the show. Oh. Well, yes, Kiara said it correctly. We love you, Cam Ross. And this was so fun. I personally got to watch all three and they were all, they never failed to amaze me. Um, you do have a couple more questions, but I do just want to say like it has been the time. So thank you so much for coming. If you do have to go, Cam, I don't know if you want to. Thank you. I can uh, answer a few more questions. Um, all right. Mika said, how, um, how you paint without a reference in front of you? How do you paint without a reference in front of you? It's a lot of memorization, trying to memorize the, uh, what I saw on the show. Um, and then after I practice, because I usually do it with like notes, and then after a while I just uh, memorize all the technique. And because I've looked at the painting so much, because I've painted so much, I kind of already have like the visual image in my head. Uh, and then each painting does turn out a little bit different, like subtly different. I just I know the general technique though, and know where to put it. And I just kind of just visualize the painting in my head after seeing it so many times. Yeah. Rhiannon asked a really good question. Um, are you a visual thinker or like a word thinker? Like, can you see, do you see the painting in your brain before you paint it? Or is it like a step-by-step -step type thing? I'm a very visual person. Uh, just in general, I always need like a visual reference. Whenever I read instructions for like a, when I'm building something or whatever, or assembling something, like I always look at the pictures without before I even look at the words. Uh, that's probably because when I was little, I used to play Legos. So like all the instructions were just pictures. So I'm just a super visual person. Like if you're gonna tell me to do something, you need to like show me in person. It just helps a lot if like I can actually see it before doing. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, and the last question that I see <laughs> um, is from our last question asker, Nick. He said, will Cam Ross father my children? Is that, are you down? or sure fam let's go <laughs> um all right that was all the questions in the chat i think i hopefully i didn't miss any nick said his life is complete <laughs> <laughs> um yay okay thank you so much for coming everyone i'm gonna stick around if you have any questions regarding anything House management wise, Cam will be here if you have any other questions, but thank you. I'm gonna stop recording.